Yo, what's going on guys? Tanmay for Simple Snippets and welcome back to another video tutorial under operational research and especially the game theory part. So in the previous video of this playlist, we saw what is the concept of game theory, where exactly it is used and who uses it and what does game theory help us achieve. So that was a very theoretical video and it was a very short video. If you don't know anything about game theory, you definitely should be watching that. If you know what is game theory, in this video what we are going to do is we are going to go through a little bit of terminologies and concepts of game theory. But we'll also take a practical example that is we'll solve two numericals based on game theory. So make sure you watch this video till the end because by the end of this video we'll be solving two different types of numericals based on game theory. Okay, so with that being said, let's start off with today's topic. Okay, so as you can see on the screen, we have some little bit of game theory terminologies that is the terms used when we are going to be solving the numericals. If you already know all these terms, you can skip to the part wherein we directly start off with the numericals. So you can see the time code somewhere on the screen. So you can directly skip to that. However, if you're new, just go through it. It will not take a lot of time. It will just take two minutes of your time. So starting off with concept or term number one, we have players. So of course, in game theory, we're going to be having multiple players competing against each other. In this case, especially we're going to be having two players always. And these players are basically entities that participate in the competition to maximize their gains or minimize their losses. Now they can be companies, individuals, teams, etc. So on and so forth, depending on what domain they are into. Then we have strategies. So strategy is the plan of action which is implemented or chosen by the respective player for their processes. So let's say we have two companies which are manufacturing cars. So to in order to increase their sales or reduce their losses or increase their profits, each of them have multiple strategies, right? So that's what a strategy is. Now depending upon whether that company selects only one strategy or it selects multiple strategies, it can be categorized as pure strategy and mixed strategy. So you'll understand this more when you actually solve the numericals based on these two types itself. So we're going to be solving one numerical on pure strategy and one numerical on mixed strategy. So the idea will be more clear. So the next thing is payoff matrix. So when we are solving numericals, we're going to be using mat matrix and this is how it is going to look. So this playoff matrix has player one, that is player A and player B and A1, A2 and A3 are strategies of player A and B1, B2 and B3 are strategies of player B. Now there can be more than three strategies per player or they can be even one strategy. Right now, as you can see, we have three strategies for player A, that is A1, A2 and A3 and three strategies for player B, B1, B2 and B3. Okay. And then we have certain values. So when you have a positive value, what we say is player A is going to gain that kind of value. So if this is rupees, then player A gains 22 rupees. If he selects strategy A1 and if player B selects strategy B1. Similarly, if player A selects strategy A2 and player B selects strategy B2, then their corresponding cell A2, B2, which is the center one is a positive value, right? So we say that player A gains 34 rupees and player B at the same time loses 34 rupees. So for all the positive values, player A is going to gain and for all the positive values, player B is going to lose. Similarly, if there is a negative value, you can see A3. So if player A selects strategy A3, and player B selects strategy B2, then player A is going to incur a loss of 86. However, since it is minus, player B is going to get profit of 86. So this is how you analyze or this is how you read the table or matrix. And this is what we are going to be using when we solve the numerical. Now, when we are going to be solving these numericals based on game theory, we're going to be using this principle known as maxi min principle and minimax principle. So in maxi min principle, player A maximizes the minimum gains. Okay. And minimax is used by player B, wherein player B is trying to minimize the maximum loss. Okay. So always player A is going to use maximum principle and player B is going to be using minimax principle. So this is what we are going to follow as a standard. It is not compulsory, but typically it is what is used in many numericals and it has sort of become like a de facto thing. So that's how it is going to be. Then we have a concept of saddle point. So when the maximum value is equal equal to minimax value, we say that we have a saddle point and right now this saddle point thing might not be very clear because we haven't yet started with the numerical, but it will be very clear when we get to the numerical. Just remember that maximum value is equal equal to minimax value. Then we have a saddle point. Then we have the concept of value of game. That is if the game has a saddle point, then the value of the cell at the saddle point is called value of game. So when we have a saddle point, we will typically have a particular cell. So let's say if 34 is that saddle point then the value of the game is equal to 34. Okay. You'll see that in the numerical as well. And lastly, we have concept of two person zero sum game. 
सो इफ गेन ऑफ वन प्लेयर इज इक्वल इक्वल टू लॉस ऑफ अदर इट इज नोन एज टू पर्सन जीरो सम गेम सो जस्ट रिमेंबर दिस कॉन्सेप्ट एंड दिस विल हैपन वेन वी हैव अ प्योर स्ट्रेटेजी सो यू अंडरस्टैंड दिस एज वेल सो दिस वॉज अ क्विक इंट्रो अबाउट ऑल दीज कॉन्सेप्ट विच वी आर गोन बी नाउ यूजिंग वेन वी एक्चुअली सॉल्व अ न्यूमेरिकल सो लेट्स फॉर स्टार्ट ऑफ विथ अ प्योर स्ट्रेटेजी न्यूमेरिकल ओके सो लेट मी जस्ट फर्स्ट क्विकली रीड द क्वेश्चन एंड देन वील अंडरस्टैंड वॉट दिस क्वेश्चन इज ऑल अबाउट सो वी हैव प्लेयर ए हु कैन चूज हिज स्ट्रेटेजीज फ्रॉम ए वन ए टू एंड ए थ्री वेल बी कैन चूज फ्रॉम बी वन एंड बी टू रूल्स ऑफ द गेम स्टेट दैट पेमेंट शुड बी मेड इन अकॉर्डेंस विद द सिलेक्शन ऑफ स्ट्रेटेजीज गिवन बिलो विच स्ट्रेटेजी शुड प्लेयर ए एंड बी सिलेक्ट टू गेट द ऑप्टिम बेनिफिट्स ऑफ द प्ले सो प्लेयर ए हैज थ्री स्ट्रेटेजीज ए वन ए टू एंड ए थ्री एंड प्लेयर बी हैज बी वन एंड बी टू एंड डिपेंडिंग अपॉन वॉट दे सिलेक्ट वी हैव अ करस्पॉन्डिंग रिजल्ट सो इफ ए सिलेक्ट ए वन एंड बी सिलेक्ट बी वन ए पे इज वन रुपीज टू बी Similarly, if A selects A one and B selects B two, B pays rupees six to A, and so on and so forth. So, using this table, we have to first create the payoff matrix. So, let's do that. So, in the payoff matrix, we have player A and player A has three strategies: A one, A two, and A three, as you can see in the question. And player B has two. So, let's first fill out these values. So, when we have A one and B one selected, that is this first row. A one pays one rupee to B. So, remember when A one is paying to B. A one is going into a loss, right? So this has to be depicted as negative because we are looking in from A one's perspective over here in this numerical, wherein A one is going to maximize his gains and player B is looking into minimizing his loss. Okay, so whenever A one is paying to B, we put it as negative; otherwise, we put it as positive. So when A one and B two is selected, that is A one and B two, B pays six rupees to A. So this is positive because A one is gaining six rupees. And similar to this, I'm just gonna fill out all the values. So for A to B one, B pays two to A, so it's gonna be positive. A to B two, B pays four rupees again positive. A three B one, A pays rupees two to B, so negative. And A three B two, A pays rupees six to B, then again negative. So now we have completed our payoff matrix, and now the step number two is to actually find out maximum of columns. Okay, so we have to find out maximum in this column, that is this entire column. So you can see two is the maximum, right? So you write down maximum over here, and then you go ahead and check which is the maximum value in this. So you can see six is the maximum. So you write down six over here. Similarly, for the rows, what you do is you find out minimum of rows. So you check this row, and you can see that minus one is minimum. So I'm going to write minus one. You check this row. Minimum is two. Oh, so we have two and four. So the minimum is going to be two. And over here, you can see minus two and minus six. So minus six is minimum. And now what you have to do is for this entire minimum of rows, you have to calculate maximum. So from the minimum of rows, which one is the maximum value? You can see that two is maximum, right? So you have done two over here. Similarly, from the maximum of columns, you find out the most minimum value. So minimum over here between two and six is two, right? So you write down two over here. So this is maxi min, and this is minimax value. Okay. So these are those two principles that we just used. So for player A, we are using maxi min. That is, we are trying to maximize the minimum profit. For player B, we are using minimax, wherein we are trying to minimize the maximum loss. Okay. So now here you can see that maxi min is equal to minimax, right? So the value of maxi min is two. And minimax is also two, so these two things are equal. So which means that we have a saddle point, and the value of the game is also two. So this is how you actually reach to the final answer. So we have reached the final answer, and the final answer is since the maxi min value is equal to the minimax value, there is a saddle point, and the strategy is pure strategy because there is a saddle point. The saddle point is at two comma one, and two comma one means second row, first column. So this is that saddle point we are talking about. Whose value is two? The optimum strategy for A is A two because second row is A two, and for B is B one because B one is the first column wherein we have the saddle point, and the value of the game is two. That's the value of the saddle point. And lastly, we can just state that since it is positive, this value is positive, right? It's not negative. Player B pays rupees two to player A. So basically, we are selecting this use case. Okay, B pays rupees two to A. So this is where A can gain the maximum, and B is trying to minimize his loss, right? So this is that actual value of the game. So this was numerical number one, which was based on pure strategy, wherein we had a saddle point. 
let's see an example where we are not going to get a saddle point okay so as you can see in the question we've been given consider the following payoff matrix with the respect to player a and solve it optimally so here we are not given a word problem we've been directly given the payoff matrix and we have to just find out the optimum solution or the optimum strategies which player a and player b should select so again we first need to start off with trying to find out whether this game has a saddle point or not so let's do that so first we find out maximum of columns so we compare 9 and 5 maximum is 9 we compare 11 and 7 maximum is 11 for the rows we compare minimum of row so we compare 9 and 7 and minimum is 7 we compare 5 and 11 minimum is 5 for player a again we are going to be using maximin and for player b we are going to be using minimax so this is default so now out of these minimum values we have to select the maximum so 7 is maximum over here and out, out of these maximum values that is 9 and 11 we have to select the minimum one so here we have 9 and now you can see that we do not have a saddle point because 9 is not equal to 7 right so in this game we do not have a saddle point so now what do we do so now we can say that this is not a pure strategy numerical so this is a mixed strategy and we know that in mixed strategy what happens is players can have multiple strategies and they can select multiple strategies and assign probabilities to them okay so player a is not gonna just use a1 or not just gonna use a2 player a is gonna use a1 and a2 but in different proportions or in different probabilities so we'll see how to find that so in this kind of numerical wherein we are going to be using mixed strategy what we have to do is we have to find something which is known as augments okay so this is some new term which you are coming across and basically what augments is is that we just have to take a subtraction between the rows so we have to do 9 minus 7 and assign it to one row below it so here what we do is 9 minus 7 and we know that 9 minus 7 is equal to 2 similarly we, we do 11 minus 5 so we take the larger value and subtract it from the smaller value so 11 minus 5 is going to be 6 so you write it in the upper row so 11 minus 5 is going to be 6 and we do the same thing for the columns also so we take 9 minus 5 which is 4 but we will write it over here and we take 11 minus 7 which is 4 so we write it over here now if we had any negative number let's say minus 7 so again we have to take the larger number and subtract the smaller number from it so it would be 9 minus minus 7 so it will be 9 plus 7 okay so right now we do not have any negative number so just ignore this so what we did is we just found out the augments that is 4 4 and 6 and 2 now as i mentioned since this is a mixed strategy player a and player b are both going to be using both the strategies but the probability of each strategy is going to be different so now what we have to do is we have to find probability p1 probability p2 for a1 and a2 of player a and we will say probability q1 and probability q2 for strategy b1 and b2 of player b so for p1 that is probability of player a using a1 it is given by 6 that is this upper augment upon 6 plus 2 so you just perform addition so it's gonna be 6 upon 8 so this is gonna be 3 by 4 similarly for p2 it is gonna be this lower augment 2 upon again 6 plus 2 so it's gonna be 2 by 8 which is gonna be 1 by 4 similarly for strategy b1 and b2 of player b so we have q1 for b1 so q1 is given by 4 that is this augment upon 4 plus 4 which is 4 upon 8 which is 1 by 2 and again q2 is gonna be 4 that is this augment upon again 4 plus 4 so again 1 by 2 so we found out the probabilities of individual strategies because all the strategies are gonna be used and now last thing left is value of the game so there are four different ways in which you can find out the value of the game and the answer is always gonna be the same I'm just gonna be showing you one way so what you have to do is we have to take the columns that is 9 and 5 so you have to take the first value of the first column 9 and multiply it with the augment 6 so 9 into 6 plus you have to take this lower value of the column first column 5 multiplied by this augment 2 so 5 into 2 upon again total of these augments 6 plus 2 so if you calculate this ultimately you're going to be getting the answer of 8 so this is the value of the game now another way you can do is you can do 7 into 6 plus 11 into 2 upon 6 plus 2 and again you're going to be getting 8 or you can do it with rows also so you can take 9 into this augment that is 4 plus 7 
into again this augment that is 4 upon 4 plus 4 that is 8. So again you are going to be getting 8. So you can try out different formulas. There are 4 different ways but the answer is always going to be the same. So yes we have basically reached our final answer. So the final answer goes as follows. Strategy of A is going to be 3 by 4 comma 1 by 4. So this is for A1 and this is for A2. Similarly strategy of B is going to be 1 by 2 comma 1 by 2. So this is B1 and B2. So these are probabilities okay you can convert it into 0.75 and 0.25 and the probability values are always going to be ranging between 0 and 1. So we've got the final answer of strategies of A and B and we've also got the game value so you can just note them down in the final answer in a proper order. So yes this was a basic example of mixed game and that's it for this video guys. I hope you understood the concept of game theory. We saw the different terms being used and we also solved two numericals based on pure game and mixed game. So in the next video, we'll try to see a couple of more examples so that this idea gets even more clearer and there we'll only take the numerical and not those terms. So that's it for this video guys. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up to share it with your friends. Let me know how this video was and see you guys in the next video. Peace.